In this video, I want to give you a quick idea of just how many domains that one website can load in the background using a tool called NoScript. And personally, I believe this has security ramifications. So in this video, I'm going to visit a very common website, CNN.com, using a tool called NoScript. Here I've actually gone to the site with a default install of NoScript, and as you can tell, I can actually see CNN's page, because right now NoScript is blocking all of the scripts, including the ones from CNN.com's domain name. So using NoScript, I'm going to go ahead and trust all the normal CNN.com domain names, but I'm not going to trust the other stuff yet. Now when I reload the page, you can actually see that it starts to load the actual CNN web page, and I can see some of the stories. However, now CNN.com has tried to load scripting content from many other domain names on top of that. In fact, it's a huge amount of domain names that scrolls right off the list. This is one of the biggest security risks because all of these additional domains are more attack surface. If an attacker has taken over some of these domains, it could actually load hijacked or malicious content. Now to start, I'm only going to start allowing some of the more recognizable domains like uh, Twitter and Amazon, Google, and other well-recognized domain services. By the way, the proper way to use NoScript is actually only to allow a script from as few domains as possible. You only want to allow the script from the domains that the site directly interacts with, and you kind of want to avoid any third-party domains because they could redirect you to malicious uh, uh, content, especially in the case of malvertising, where attackers might have loaded malicious advertising. Nonetheless, after actually allowing a whole bunch of content, even more scripts show up on the list. This time, I'm going to go ahead and allow everything, which is not something you would typically do in no script, but I'd like to see if I allow everything, what additional domains will CNN force me to. So at this point, I've allowed almost everything I can, and yet, when I reload the page, we actually see even more scripts attempting to run through NoScript. Uh, I also am starting to see some of the advertising content from this web page. Now that I click, though, you can see even more uh, additional domains showing up, including uh, Castle Media, uh, Gigya, and many other domain names. It's kind of scary that the more content you allow from web pages, the more additional third-party content gets loaded over and over. And again, it's this complexity, the fact that a normal website is really connecting to so many other domains out there that really is adding too much complexity in websites. Again, all of these additional domains introduce additional risk to web browsers. While a lot of it is probably legitimate content, in fact, in this case, this is all legitimately what CNN's site is trying to do, you never know if one of their ad partners might be infected with some sort of malware. So at this point, again, I've allowed just about everything CNN has thrown at me, and yet there's still new stuff coming up, which I will again accept and allow. So really, the moral of the story is after allowing just about everything CNN threw at me, uh, CNN loaded content from 48 additional domains. So there were 48 different sites being loaded in the background to help generate the content you see on CNN's page. And I'm not picking on CNN particularly. This is actually something you can see at many of the pages out there. Many of them load a ton of additional content. In fact, if you use these helpers like NoScript, it's surprising how much stuff uh, a single page loads. In any case, that's just one example of, of how one website can load many different domains. And again, this does introduce new security risk because with each of these domains comes additional potential risk.